Ricky Ray face the Calgary defense. They give Stamps two. And it's second and eight. Here comes the blitz. Ray just got it away off the one hand of Stamps. Who had Ronnie Ma Amati in his back pocket. And it's three consecutive two and outs. For and Ricky this, Ray. This is where, Chris, these guys at receiving core are going to have to work their one-on-one -on -one routes. This is Maurice Mann who Ricky Ray wanted to go to initially on Brandon Brown or right in his hip pocket. You say, saw Ronnie Amati also real close to Fred Stamps and not any windows for Ricky Ray to get that football in. So a one for five start for the Eskimos signal caller. Noel Prefontaine kicking to Titus Ryan. Another line drive and that one's going to Bounce down inside the 25-yard line. Good kick and no return for Prefontaine. 48-yard punt. So Henry Burris has the upper hand so far. One hundred and fifty yards away. Rework our math. One one seventy to tie, one seventy one to go ahead as Jonathan Reynolds steamrolls ahead close to a first down at the thirty four. Yeah, I asked Richie Hall yesterday in our meeting. I said the question to him was, what's your thoughts facing Henry Burris at quarterback? And his answer was Joffrey Reynolds. So I was a little confused and wondered if he heard the question. But he, he said Henry Burris is at his best when he's got Joffrey Reynolds. Joffrey Reynolds coming off a couple hundred yard games. He's really rolling it out now. First down run. Little pump one way, looks the other, and looks downfield, and incomplete. Trying to go to the speedster, Titus Ryan, and good coverage there by Jason Goss on the Eskimo corner. This has got to be good news for Richie Hall, who's probably wondering how his secondary will hold up. He's got Jason Goss, who started the season inside, has moved out to corner. It's going to happen to the right of your screen here. A little pump fake to the field, and then back to the short side with that one-on-one -on -one matchup, but Jason Goss in perfect position and look back to the ball. Kitwana Jones checks in on second and 10 for the Eskimos. Here comes the rush. Kitwana Jones and Dario Romero get to the quarterback. It's the second sack of the game. And Edmonton thought without Rob Lazio, maybe they could get some heat up the middle on Henry Burris. Tim O'Neill's in his second start, and he's up against Daryl Romero, who Dan Kepley can't talk enough about, and is the first guy to celebrate with Romero on the sideline. He tries a swim move on him and then spins back to the inside. Nice move there on Tim O'Neill for that sack. Fourth sack for number 94. And yeah, that's a field position changing play. Dales to boot. Tristan Jackson has to field it back at his 40. There is a penalty marker on the play. And Jackson has some room. Into Calgary territory and out at the Stampede 44 yard line. 27 on the return, but let's see what the penalty marker is all about. And Tristan Jackson now slow to get up. The Eskimo return. The return holding Edmonton number 88. 10-yard penalty, first down. So it gets wiped out by an Andrew Nowacki hold. That flag was early. It had to be right on the line of scrimmage, and Nowacki just not letting a player release to go down in coverage. But of more concern for the Eskimos is the health of Tristan Jackson. He is the spark that gets this team going more times than not. That's a 41-yard penalty as the Eskimos back now at their 30-yard line with just two yards of offense so far. Big by Ray, and now 
He takes off, and maybe that'll loosen things up and take it out heavily. Miguel Robaday with a late hit on the sideline, so a first down run by Ray, and they'll tack on 15 more. Well, one penalty looked like it was really gonna hurt the Eskimos in field position, and this one foul. should get it back. Unnecessary roughness, Calgary, number 96. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, the Stamps are second last in penalties, averaging over 100 yards per game. Now, Ricky Ray had that left foot still in the field of play. That was a close one, but I think the official saying, you know what, you could have pulled up there and didn't have to throw him into the bench like that. So it's up to midfield. And an Edmonton first down. Quick hitter. And a completion, short gain for Jamaica Rector in front of Shannon James. You mentioned the penalties for the Calgary Stampeders. This is a concern. Well, you know, John Huffnagel's not calling it a concern just yet. It's something that he's observing very closely because this team has been in double figures in penalties and ranks seventh in the league so far after six games. He said that he wants his team to play aggressively. It's a balancing act so that they don't go over the line and get penalties that hurt them on the scoreboard. Heavy six. Only the Toronto Argonauts have taken more penalties so far this season. Second and four, Ray looking deep. Has it in! Brent steps! Touchdown! <laughs> 49 yards to the suddenly favorite Edmonton target. Fred Stamps starts in the backfield on this play just to the right of your screen. And when he gets out of that backfield, now he is hitting the line of scrimmage on the fly. Ricky Ray buys a split second more time by stepping up in the pocket and finds his number one target over the last two games. Prefontaine, the extra point. Quick drive, three plays at 80 yards for Fred Stamps. The Edmonton Eskimos offensively have wanted to incorporate more pre-snap motion. There's Fred Stamps, number two, coming out of the backfield. He started on the left side of Ricky Ray, and then he just runs that nice out route and down the seam. One-on-one -on, -one on Ronnie Amati gets in behind him and then cuts back on Milton Collins to safety. Back-to-back 100-yard -back game for Fred Stamps. His best game of the season last week versus the Hamilton Tiger Cats when he had seven catches for 136. So Stamps against the Stamps. And this game is tied. mentioned the back-to-back 100-yard -back games. He's halfway there again. And I found it surprising. The Eskimos have not had a receiver with three consecutive 100-yard games in the last eight years. Uh, Terry Vaughn, the last one. Titus Ryan on the return. And he'll be brought down at the 35-yard line. Mark Cristelli is there. And we're in the final minute of his opening quarter. Well, after two good drives for the Calgary Stampeders, now the Edmonton defensive front four with Dario Romero and Greg Peach have made it a little bit tougher sledding for Henry Burns. He started out on fires, now at 50%. So he has to get this offense going again and see how he can find the answer to a defensive line that's played their last two series real well. You mentioned Dan Kepley. He said, Dario Romero is the one guy I'd taken to put him on that dynasty team of the late 70s and early 80s a couple of pumps from burris and nick lewis is wide open they forgot about number 82 and he's still going down to the eskimo 33. you know there are coaches that that feel that when you roll the quarterback out that you you cut the field off 
and you take away some potential targets. This is bootleg where, yes, the field is cut in half, but watch the threat of run and how that affects Jason Goss. You see him sneaking up. He wasn't sure if he should come up and tackle Burris as he was pump faking there, or he should stay back, and Nick Lewis opened up behind him. Big half for Nick Lewis. Big quarter. And now Thelwell drops it. On the final play of the opening 15 minutes here at Commonwealth. It's the Saab, tied at seven. First quarter stats are brought to you by Tim Hortons. Always fresh, always. The Calgary Stampeders kind of owned the first half of the first quarter, and then Edmonton got things going late. 49-yard pass to Fred Stamps for a touchdown by Ricky Ray really accounting for most of their passing yards. Nick Lewis with more yardage than the Edmonton Eskimo offense. Jeff Bielon mentioned to me yesterday, the veteran right tackle of the Stamps, the team that has the ball most will probably win this game. Do you agree? I, I do agree because it can become a shootout quickly with these two quarterbacks and Henry Burris and Ricky Ray when they play against each other. They put up some big numbers. So that team that can keep their offense on the field longest has that chance to get that advantage down the stretch. Here's Burris throwing over the middle and has a completion. And Ryan Thelwell at the 20 has another first down. Well, the good news for the Edmonton Eskimos, they got their linebacker, Rod Davis, back in the game. We showed you that he was injured early. There he is. Now he's in the middle linebacker spot. He steps up in the line and then is kind of flushed to the offensive left, which opens up the middle in a big way for Ryan Thelwell there. Jermaine Copeland and now spreading things around for that Calgary offense puts himself in second and short and really opens up the playbook gain of eight grab his headset problem suits you might have to take over here here's John Cornish to the goal line and touchdown and an answer from the stamps in a hurry as John Cornish hits pay dirt for the second time this season. The Calgary Stampede is one of the best teams in the league in capitalizing when they get in the red zone. Well, again, play action. Remember the last time they were down in the goal line area, it was a Teo jo Johnson touchdown from Henry Burris. Some very similar action where they go play action to Joffrey Reynolds. They try and freeze the linebackers and then get another player out on the perimeter. John Cornish calls that a house call. He's made a house call and they stamped at the lead. Shop a 